I'm Kumar Devan from Penang, Malaysia. You can call me Kumar. Now, I just want to ask you a few questions. Now, are you having these suicidal thoughts? Maybe even right now. No. Have you been going through some challenges in your life that you do not know how to overcome this? How to win this situation? Are you been hearing voices of all kinds of disturbance, even in the nights, maybe dreams and voices that you do not know what's happening with you. You feel so threatened. Are you in a place where you keep on thinking about the old mistakes that probably you have done or maybe the things that you have done and maybe you cannot even forgive yourself for that purpose or that reason. All these things are tormenting you, right? Or maybe you have gone through that. Now, listen to me, my friends. I've been where you are and I know how you feel. Now, in when I was about 17 years old, uh, I've been through so many things in my life. You know, I was involved in a wrong group of people and get involved in things which I'm not supposed to do as a teenager, as a growing young man, you know, uh, which means I'm trying to tell you that I got to hide things from my parents for what I was doing and that was not really good things. I got involved in fightings and, you know, not actually gangsterism, but in a way, like fighting for my friends, doing things which is not right. But all these things did not help me. When I got into trouble, my, my friends was not there to help me. And I got confused so many times. And my studies dropped very badly. I was studying well, but it kept on dropping and I didn't do very well in my exams. I felt like I was a failure. I felt that I was not doing something good. And I thought that it is, you know, so many bad thoughts started to come and you know, fill up my minds. At one point of time, um, you know, I, I also had this sickness from very young age, like this ac acute asthma, a chronic asthma. And many times when I had this attack and I couldn't breathe, my parents will be there, my mom especially will be there to help me with the nebulizer or medicine or whatever to you know, to help me to breathe. But at this one day, one day when I, you know, came back home, I had three other siblings. We are four siblings in my family, but all of them went to school and they were not around and my parents went to work. And when I came back home, at that moment of time, I suddenly had a very, very heavy attack, this asthmatic attack. I couldn't breathe. I was struggling for breath and at that moment of time, I started hearing a lot of voices telling me I'm, I'm a failure and you know, I, I will not do well in my life and I, will, uh, you know, I cannot grow to be somebody in, in the future. Or, you know, in the, the whole thing was like crushing me and I thought the only thought that came to me was it is better for me to die, better for me to take off my life, take my life. And the suicidal thoughts became so strong inside of me and I remember running from, I was staying in the living room in the hall. I ran to the kitchen at the back and took a knife and wanted to commit suicide. At that moment, I do not know what happened. Even until now, I cannot remember what exactly happened. But the next moment when I woke up, I woke up seeing myself in the hospital. And beside me was my mom and I was on nebulizer. And, and I suddenly I thought like, was, is, it a is it like a dream? And I asked my mom, I, say, I asked her, I said, Mom, why am I here and what happened? And she told me the story that when she came back after work, she saw me lying down in the sofa in the living room in the hall. And I asked her, can, I was thinking to myself, it cannot be because I went to the kitchen, I remember, taking the knife. Then I asked her, did you see anything beside me? And she said, no, she didn't see anything. And that really confused me. I was thinking, 
what did really happen and I checked my body to see there was no any marks of hurt and I knew from that day there's somebody who helped me something came something invisible came to save me and brought me to the hall and and brought me to the hospital and I'm alive so as I was keeping keep on thinking about this now I was also at one point of time I became a free thinker I don't want to believe in God I don't want to believe in anything you know I was I really hated God at one point of time and asked myself is there God if there is a God he should heal me he should deliver me he should save me he should give me wisdom and knowledge and that was a challenge that I made with God and I told once I said if you, there is a God come and see me and I remember in 1988 and I was about 18 years old somebody came to my house to visit my mom who was sick and prayed for her a person from the church and after that he started sharing with me the love of Jesus and he said Jesus can heal me and deliver me and set me free first i didn't want to believe him but when i saw my mom got healed and getting better I thought to myself will this Jesus help me too and one day he invited me to the church and I followed him to the church and the second time when I went to the church again because the first time when I go when I went to the church I felt like I don't want to come back again but I heard a voice talking to me saying go back to that place go back to that place and the following week or so I went back to the same church and as everybody was worshiping and praying to god i felt like some kind of power that came upon me and i started to cry and i was full of tears and i felt like a burden that is inside of me that was so for so long like boxes of burdens was just leaving me one after another and i feel lighter and lighter and lighter and one at one moment i felt that something is so free i became so free inside of me and and that was the day i can still remember that was the day 28 8 1988 i gave my life to jesus christ and from that day onwards my life started to change i was completely healed and god blessed me with wisdom and i started to study very well and by god's grace and wisdom i became a journalist with a leading Malay newspaper in in Malaysia and I became a journalist for 10 years and after that God start speaking to me and I had the I had the desire to go out there and to share this good God and the love of God and this grace that will set us free and in in the year 2000 I became a full-time pastor traveling everywhere talking about this loving jesus who has set me free the one who set me free is ready to set you free jesus said the spirit of god is upon me to set the captives free my friends if you are hearing me today remember the same jesus who set me free he will free you he will deliver you he will bless you god bless you and thanks for hearing and i believe today as you are hearing this just call him inside of your heart and he will come and change your whole life god bless you